1985, the Pentagon. The US military has been locked into a cold war with the Soviet Union for nearly 40 years. Russia versus the US, spy versus spy, each determined to gain control of the ultimate high ground, space. The Soviets would put up satellites frequently, take pictures, and very, very accurately keep up with United States military forces. They could very quickly launch satellites in a matter of hours and launch a lot of them. The Pentagon sees the satellites as a dangerous threat to national security. In theory, the F-15 made sense. It was powerful enough that it could carry a 3,000-pound rocket, and it could carry it to the altitudes and at the velocities that would allow the rocket to launch and, and go up into space. It sounds like science fiction, but it was a very real plan with very high stakes. The satellite chosen for destruction, an out-of-date American research satellite called P-78-1. The man chosen to destroy it, Major General Pearson. September 13th, 1985, Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. At 12.40 in the afternoon, Pearson straps into his F-15. There's a 2,700-pound, 18-foot-long missile mounted to the jet's center line. This is actual video from his flight. The satellite is 345,000 feet above the Earth. It's moving at 23,000 feet per second. Once his F-15 reaches 30,000 feet, Pearson has just a 10-second window to fire the missile. If his timing is off, he'll miss it completely. Mark, waypoint two at point eight six months. Rocketing into the air, Pearson pulls the F-15 into a steep climb. At 35,000 feet, he fires. An infrared honing device on the rocket guides it as it heads into the sky. The F-15 has done what no other plane has been able to do conquer the heavens. Shooting down the satellite sends a strong message to the Soviets. 